Welcome to the Scoop School Podcast, where we tackle your conundrums about the retail ice cream and frozen dessert business. And now, here's your host. He's delivered more scoops than 60 minutes. The ice cream bloke and self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, Steve Christensen. G'day, ice cream lovers. Thanks for joining us today on the podcast. We're starting a bit of a series here continuing I guess some of the information that we had in the last videos in relation to your menu this uh, next five videos we're going to be talking about cups containers best types best sizes best use of before we jump into that I do want to thank our episode sponsor which is Lockhead Vanilla now Lockhead Vanilla George and John Lockhead own the business third generation they tell stories of going down when they were little kids screwing caps on bottles down at the vanilla plant this family is really steeped in vanilla culture and vanilla history and vanilla lore, L-O-R-E. So uh, have a look at their website, lockheadvanilla.com, L-O-C-H-H-E-A-D, lockheadvanilla.com. Thank you for your episode sponsorship. So again, this video, we're going to be talking about cup sizes and my recommendation on one, two, three, four, five, the five cups that you must have in your ice cream shop. Now again, my opinion, you might want to vary a little bit, but it's important to understand where the basis comes from and make some good decisions on your cup size, because really when it comes down to it, the presentability and the marketability of your product depends on how good it looks in the cup with your toppings, fudge, and so forth all over the top. So let's start with number one. Number one is a two ounce sample cup. Now I know that you'll more than likely give away a lot of samples as mini spoons in the display case, uh, whether you're doing a batch frozen product or whether you're doing frozen custard, mini spoons are good. This cup is fantastic for a number of reasons. First of which is that if you've got someone that wants their fudge on the side, you can put simply two ounces of hot fudge in here and you can give it to them on the side if they don't want it on their topping. But the two ounce sample cup is a great size for a single three ounce scoop. Now, before we jump into all of these ounce terminologies, I just want to talk a little bit about the process of what an ounce means. Whenever we talk about a containers, we're talking about volumetric ounces. How many liquid, how many, how many ounces of liquid water can I put in here? That's the volume. But whenever we're talking about scoops in the ice cream business, we're always talking about weight ounces. Whenever we are doing portion control, whenever we are doing costs or food costs analysis, we're talking about the weight of the ice cream. And this is where it gets a little bit um, ambiguous or a little bit crazy, particularly in the United States, because we use the same ounce term for volumetric as well as weight. So when I'm referring to cups, I'm talking about volumetric ounces. When I'm talking about scoops, I'm talking about weight ounces. You'll get it as we go along. So again, the, this is the perfect size cup for a three ounce by weight scoop to drop in here. Now that could be great for a sample, so it's, let's say you're having an open day or a special event and you've got a tray going around, you can't really have a tray go around with mini spoons in ice cream. So this is a great size for um, if you've got special groups that come in, retirees, uh, special interest groups, kindergarten kids, it's a great size to just put one three ounce scoop in this two ounce cup. This is actually a Solo or a Dart B200 cup and I would really recommend having a box of these. I think you'll utilize them not only for condiments, but for ice cream samples, those special occasion ice cream samples, where you don't want to give them a full sample or a full serving, but you don't just want to give them a mini spoon, this uh, two ounce sample cup is the way to go. So that's what I would start with when it comes to your cup sizes. The next is this five ounce cup. Now this is a Solo SD5. Remember there's a difference between certain five ounce cups. If I just call up my Solo distributor, my Dart distributor, and I say, hey, send me a box of five ounce cups, I might get a fluted cup, which is more of a drinking cup than a squat cup or a Sunday cup like this. So again, a five ounce cup allows me to put my single serve or my regular ice cream size into a cup rather than a cone. Wherever you go throughout the United States, at least, uh, in gelato, it, it differs a little bit, but for the most part, most ice cream shops, when you go in there and ask for, just give me a regular serving, your regular serve of ice cream, whether it be soft serve, whether it be custard, or whether it be premium or hard scoop ice cream, most regular servings are about five ounces in weight, give or take an ounce. 
So the beauty here is that I can put my regular serving of five ounces or six ounces or four ounces, somewhere around that five ounce mark, into this cup rather than a cone, and it's a really good size. If the customer wants a little bit of topping on there, maybe some fudge or some particulates, some candies, I've got room around here to actually do that. So a five ounce cup is really important to have. You can move up to an eight ounce cup depending on your size. Again, this is my recommendation. You need to kind of fit this recommendation to your particular menu needs. But the five ounce cup or the eight ounce cup, I say five ounce cup, is a great size for your regular scoop where someone says, I don't want it in a cone, I just want it in a cup, and you're as good as gold there. Five ounces, very good. The next size scoop, or the next size cup, is our 12 ounce cup. Now, from my menu, and we spoke in a previous video about different menu products on your menu board, and the scoopability, or the ability for your employees to make everything based on the one size scoop, for our business, it's a three ounce scoop. Every one of my products on my menu boards behind me are made as a derivative of a three ounce scoop. So as long as my kids can order a, or, or um, so as long as my kids can scoop a three ounce scoop, then they're fine. So this is my 12 ounce cup. My 12 ounce cup had three three ounce scoops in it, so nine ounces of product, and it basically made the core of my menu. It was my uh, medium and large uh, ice cream products in here off my regular menu. It was my hot fudge sundaes and caramel sundaes. It was my strawberry sundaes. It was also my featured sundaes. The majority of my menus all had three three ounce scoops as the core product in my menu products. Now, again, we delved, delved a lot in custard. We had custard stores in Australia, had a custard store here in the United States. Concretes are a blended product. This was the number one seller in all of our stores. So whether you're doing frozen custard or soft serve, a little bit harder to do it on the batch side, but you can put, uh, again, three three ounce uh, scoops in here, a little bit of candy, blend it up in the blender, and it gave me a really good size. And I, again, the blended product or that concrete was the number one selling item in my store nearly every day that we are open. So um, that was the most used cup, a 12 ounce cup. It's a great size cup for your standard traditional sundaes and items like that. Now, moving up here, I have my 16 ounce cup. My 16 ounce cup basically made my large sundaes, so I could put four three ounce scoops in here with room for topping. Um, but it also did my regular beverages. So a regular shake, a regular smoothie, or a regular float was all done in a 16 ounce cup. Remember that in your selection of all of these cups, you don't want to give people too much product. You don't want to give people to the point where they get to halfway down or three quarters of the way down and they're going, oh, it's just too much, and they throw it in the trash. You want to be able to have it so that when they get to the bottom and they're scraping out the bottom of the bucket here, or the bucket, bottom of the cup, I should say, that they want that little bit more. So over portioning doesn't work very well. That's why a 16 ounce regular frozen beverage, smoothie, shake, uh, float, really is a great size. And then last of which, I have my 20 ounce cup. And that is, again, for my larger drink products. So my large shake, large float, large smoothie. Uh, now, if you have a drive through and you have a fountain drink or a soda fountain, a soda dispenser, you might want to do a 32 ounce because people love that kind of large 32 ounce soda size. But they are basically the size. I just want to end up on this particular product. This is a banana boat. A lot of speculation in the industry about what to put a banana, a banana split in. I am very much impassioned by the fact that banana splits need to look as good as they possibly can. And I get a little bit disappointed when I go to stores and I see a banana split and a foam hot dog container. It's a beautiful, beautiful baby that you're wrapping up in a burlap sack. No, I say no. If you've got a beautiful baby, you want to present him or her in the most beautiful clothes so they win the ba best baby pageant. And that's what this is. This is a uh, dart banana boat. Again, it's clear plastic. We're gonna talk about that in the next video. But typically speaking, most of your bananas boats, the top ends up being the bottom. So again, you've got to factor in some uh, cost for the lid as well as the base. But in this particular product, it's large enough so that I can have a banana split look really, really good in it.
Now I understand for those that are listening on the podcast, they're going, what is he talking about? Go to YouTube, icecream.video is our YouTube link. Um, and you'll get a, a, a more of a visual aspect on all of the cups that I'm talking about. So again, make some good decisions on cups. Today we're just talking about sizes. We're going to talk in an upcoming video on the actual uh, material and what's best with pros and cons. Um, but I will tell you that nut out the size of your cups first. Experiment with all of your different menu items and figure out what looks good in a cup, what doesn't look too uh, small. You don't want a customer having a look at it. For example, I would never put a single scoop in a cup like this. I might save myself some time and some space so far as inventory is concerned. But if I get a three ounce scoop in the bottom of this cup, it looks like I, I should have had more, that I'm being gypped by some reason. Uh, likewise, I would never put two uh, or three three ounce scoops in a cup like this or I can't put product over the top, hot fudge, candies, that kind of thing. So do some experimentation. I'm telling you right now that the, the better your products look and the more balanced they look in your cups and the ability for people to say, hey, put a, an extra scoop of whatever that is on, that upsell ability in your cup is extremely important for the profitability of your ice cream business. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Um, we're going to, again, talk in the next couple of videos about cups, containers, straws, spoons, and the marketability of such. Uh, again, thank you for Lockhead Vanilla for sponsoring this episode. Keep on scooping, and we'll see you in the next one.